So it's so nice to be in a bar where they have animal skulls for display on the wall. Complete juxtaposition, that is wonderful. Now, I don't know any of you, and so I like to treat a first comedy set with a new group of people sort of like a first date, you know? And so the first thing that I like to tell people about on a first date is that I self-identify as a queer because it makes it impossible to emasculate me. And you gotta be on your toes when you wear jeans as tight as these, you guys. It's true. The second thing I like to tell people when I'm on a date is that I volunteer in a medical facility comforting the sick. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you very much. It's called the World Famous Cannabis Cafe. Perhaps you've heard of it. Yeah, they, people say that's not volunteering, but that shit's going on my OK Cupid, you guys. <laughs> now, I was recently at the World Famous Cannabis Cafe, and on the wall they have a poster with all these different types of weed. Uh, like they worship it or something. They got all these wonderful names like like White Power or Unicorn Fuck, you know? And they had this one type of weed on a poster. It had its own poster. And it was called Jack Wreck. Which if you smoke a lot of weed, you know that's just a cross between Jack Ferrer and Train Wreck. But if you don't smoke a lot of weed, you might get the reefer madness and jump to conclusions and decide that it's shit that is so good you start driving your car and jack it till you wreck. <laughs> I don't know. Probably bad first date material. A little more about myself. I live in Salem. Actually, I live in a town called Kaiser. It's connected to Salem. The only difference between Salem and Kaiser is that there's a road that divides the two, and that you don't want to be from one side. Like Springfield here. I'm from the Springfield of Salem. Bear with me. I live with my brother. We've got a dog, a cute little wearer. And my brother's got a 17-year-old kid. And I spent a lot of my time just trying to figure out exactly how my dog is stealing my weed, you guys. <laughs> Everybody says to me, no, Jesse, it's your nephew. He's 17 and he's got long, curly hair. People come up to the door asking for somebody named Roach. <laughs> but you see, my nephew is a good kid, and my dog is a manipulative asshole. <laughs> See, here's how I know, here's how I know. Is that I'll take a ball hit, and I'll call my dog over, I'll grab him by the face, and I'll go oh, right into his face, and he tries to get away like he doesn't love it. <laughs> yeah, I try to hold him harder, but no, he really tries. He's a good actor, you guys. See, here's how I know my nephew is a good kid. It's because he keeps good friends, you guys. For instance, the other day I came home from work, and standing on my porch is my brother and my nephew and a police officer. You know, so he keeps good friends. They're always playing games. Mostly tag. Cops always it. It's a little weird. Now I thought I had recognized the cop standing on the porch from the night before. The night before I was pulled over. I had no license, no insurance, and so I got asked the fear question. Do you guys know the fear question? It's, is there anything I need to know about inside of your car? Any drugs comes with this? To which I said, yeah, I've got a gram of weed in the pipe under the seat. And the cop had the audacity to say to me, that's less than an ounce, right? <laughs> <laughs> to which I responded, yeah, it's about a 28th of an ounce, to be precise, officer. I relayed this story back to him, and he seemed a little embarrassed to not exactly know his measurements, even despite being college educated. And so I relayed that story to him, and he said, well, that couldn't have been me, because we're in Kaiser, and if you would have looked at my shoulder, you'll see it, that it said Salem on the side. And I said, oh, I'm sorry, officers. It's just, you know, I made this mistake because, you know, all you white folks kind of look the same to me. You can relate, right, officer, Mr. Profiler? Yeah. You know what? My nephew is probably a bad kid. Because the other day, he got caught doing some graffiti, which doesn't really bug me, you know? Graffiti's cool. I, I bet you there's people in this room that do some pretty sick graffiti. This is Eugene. But he did it to somebody's house, which is really fucked up. And since I live with him, I took him aside and I said, you listen here, Austin. If you want to do graffiti, that's fine. But you take that shit to a Walmart or a fucking Starbucks! <laughs> Damn right! I like to play the 
word association game? Mm. And if you play the word association game with pot, you might think like pot and loser, you know. Or pot and burnout. Or maybe pot and hippie. You guys know this, right? This is, these are the girls with the hair that makes them look like the predator. <laughs> <laughs> the, the hippies, the hippies. People say the hippies are, you know, like liberals, you know, like they're always like, the liberal hippies voted in Obama, now we don't have our guns. You know, or them hippies are socialists. Them common hippies are ruining everything, you know. But have y'all ever bought weed from a hippie? Capitalists all the way, ladies and gentlemen. You know, like most hippies have more in common with Donald Trump than, you know, Che Guevara. They're always like, the corporations are ripping us off, man! Corporations! But it's like, no, really, hippie, 